Coming up on today's session for a pathway to well-being, I have the gorgeous Dana with me, and we are diving deep into the profound topics of returning, reclaiming, and the revival of the feminine. We will be exploring the essence of our sacred feminine and learning about the sacred dance to a higher purpose. It is a conversation full of heart designed to reconnect you with your true self. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button or check us out at www.sacredu, that's the letter U, dot love for more valuable resources. Hope you enjoy our conversation with Dana. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in our beautiful world. Today, I have the gorgeous Dana with me, where we're going to be talking about returning, reclaiming, and the revival of the feminine. I love that so much, getting in touch with our sacred feminine and learning all about the sacred dance to higher purpose. So thank you so much, Dana, for joining us today. I am honoured to be able to chat with you. What I'd love to start with, first of all, is just to introduce you. Let's get to know who Dana is. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me here, really. So I am Dana, and the work that I do is helping women, mostly women who are really aspiring, emerging, current day leaders who are wanting to step deeper into their embodiment of who they are, into their feminine. I help women, as I say, liberating women in love and legacy and leadership. And to me, it's like basically a lifestyle. I look at it as a lifestyle because when we can walk around and really take care of ourselves the way we're meant to, and we can then show up in the way that we are here to show up in our leadership at home, at work, but it involves, as I always say, integrating the healthy masculine and the healthy feminine. But since so many women, and I was there who is so far into the unhealthy masculine, I do lead with, okay, let's come back to the feminine and then we can integrate taking action from that place, from trusting and having faith in our decisions and just being liberated and confident in our relationships and our work in the world, our divine, our purpose, why we're here. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that. It's so important. We've got Right out of touch in in today's world, especially with uh, technology, I do believe. A lot of us are very much, both obviously both men and also women, just from my perspective, the majority of the world is like much more coming from the masculine energy. And because it's the stress and the anxiety and everything else that life brings, and we don't have time commas to do the things that nurture us to do the things that really help us to reclaim that that Mm -hmm. the feminine side of us and that's Mm -hmm. also with men too you know again men are brought up in this world where they have to be masculine and tough Mm -hmm. and don't really get in touch with their feminine side there are some exceptions i have met some amazing that are very much in touch with their feminine which i'm sure you have too so, yes, it's a wonderful conversation. So I'd love to know, Dana, can you share a personal story for you about how connecting with your body mm-hmm. has helped you reclaim the natural essence, your natural essence and your feminine power, your feminine yeah. energy? Yeah, absolutely. When I was 2010, after a death in the family, I started to really, I had one of those experiences, right, where you can't articulate it clearly, you just had to experience it, but just this knowing, this reverberation in my body that I wasn't living the life I was here to live. And in that moment, I just allowed myself to be led. I don't know, I just knew that I was being led and I just kept following the breadcrumbs. I kept following whatever words, and even was the divine God, sorry. I just kept following 
where I was being led. And I initially, just to make a very long story short, I initially stepped into health coaching. I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. I'm going to leave my nine to five. I was in a very stressful advertising business, nine to five, very stressful. And also when I looked around at my life at that time, my husband and I were having, we weren't married yet, but we were having some difficulties. And where it led me eventually was to health coaching, which helped me now I see In hindsight, that was an opportunity for me to clean up my body, to really allow allow my body to be more of a clear vessel. I realized I had so many intolerances and just things I was eating that weren't serving me and in my relationship to my body. And then that led me into kind of more just meditation and practices that then led me to dance. It led me to, and the way I look at it, like I say the word dance, but it actually at the time, it was more like a a movement. It was some type of movement that... I was just being called to the center of my floor to turn on this certain frequency, this music that had nature sounds and drumming. And I didn't know anything at the time about any of these other journey dance or any of these things that I now understand are out there. But I started to do that every day. And I was like, wow, there's something to this because it's connecting me to something different than just myself. It's really connecting me to this like power inside of me and this confidence inside of me. And the only way that I can explain it is just this energy of the feminine. It's how I can, it was like a, it was like a channeling almost of, of as a, the goddess within or, and as I started to tune into this and understand that a lot of the journey I was moving on through this dance, which is something I, it's called revival dance now, was actually taking me on a journey of waking up to what I needed to let go of in my life. It was waking me up to what I was actually calling in. What is my true purpose here? And what what does I need to integrate? And so there was a passage I went on around letting go, releasing what no longer served me and really reclaiming myself and then into this revival of who I am. And what's interesting is some people think, oh, revival, you're done. (laughs) It's not how it turned out. It was, oh, now I'm being revived to see really revived to see like what the path is for me and just constantly being led intuitively, which I think that I allowed my body to cultivate that sense of trust and intuition through that. And, and a a piece that I focus a lot in my work is around relationships. We spoke earlier about the divine feminine, the divine masculine, and how do these two energies within us, but also outside of us in life, how do they dance together? And so a lot of my metaphors is around dance, but I also use literal in some of my offerings, not all of them is sacred dance as a tool, not as just the way, but as a tool. And through that experience, it's just opened me up to so much more of my, my gifts, my abilities, and also where I was being led by God, by the divine. And we don't always choose our path. So it's, I guess it's that that what my body opened up to was that being an open vessel, a clear channel to receive, surrender to, and be led to in everything, even in relationships, when things got hard and I wanted to run, I would always get this hit of if ever, not now, right? If ever, not, because we never know. We're always in the unknown. Things can change in an instant. And I understand that now so much better because I've been able to cultivate such a divine love in my feminine expression in my relationship, but also marrying it with my healthy masculine and then seeing the results as I do that in the higher level of intimacy I have with my partner, with my husband and his evolution and change, which allows us as women to then step into our leadership because our relationships impact so much of who we be in the world. They do, definitely. Yeah. They totally agree with that. So thank you so much for sharing. And congratulations on achieving that, on reaching Mm -hmm. that part, especially with your husband, who is now Mm -hmm. your husband, because you were mentioning that when when you first started, you weren't Mm -hmm. even married yet, and you were having some difficulties. So really congratulations on moving through that. And reaching this space where you are now and you're able to help others. 
for sharing. Can we just go back a little bit, Dana, and I'd love for you to tell us how do you define what the sacred feminine is because we've talked about the sacred Mm -hmm. dance and the masculine and the feminine. So what for you is the sacred feminine and Mm -hmm. why is it essential for our soul's purpose? The way I look at the sacred feminine is so my business is based on the premise of my podcast is called this and it's called the luminary woman. And the way I look at this woman is she's in her sovereignty. She's virtuous. She's kind. She's compassionate. She's liberated, right? So she's able to make decisions from her own place. She has, so there's these four archetypes that I use often And I actually have a quiz that's being, it's done. I'm actually having people test it. It's like these four archetypes that make up the luminary woman is like the sovereign woman, the warrior woman, the virtuous woman. We have all these aspects of ourselves where we can stand up for ourselves, yet we're soft and compassionate and kind, and we can hold the masculine in knowing that they need help too in stepping into their healthy feminine. And I think something really powerful when it comes to the feminine is that We have such an energetic force to change the environment around us. So meaning when we can step into more confidence in ourselves and who we are, when we can learn something I'm very passionate about is conscious communication, how to actually have a conversation from a place of empowerment and from a place of also holding space when we're in that kind of relationship dynamic where we're not being rewounded or the other person isn't being rewounded. And the other thing too, is being able to stand in leadership, in purpose, in confidence in that from a space of, when I say the sacred, what I mean by that is from a space of full on trust and knowing and being led and being guided, not trying to control, not trying to force, not trying to push. And I'm not saying that those things won't enter in and come in. Like there's no perfection here, but when we can live in accordance to our intention, being embodying that aspect of ourselves, because a lot of the things I, I teach too is about like sacred living because of the path I've been through with my business, with myself, which is it's, I've had so many evolutions of what I do that now it's almost like a lifestyle business, right? Because I look at it as this isn't just something to do in relationships and not just something to do in our work. It's every day. How can we continue to be in alignment, taking care of our bodies and not feeling bad about it? Self-care, any way that we can live in accordance to the sacred living, eating, So that's how I look at it. It's like living in accordance to alignment to, and again, whatever word works for anyone, I use God or the divine often, but living in accordance to our godliness, living in accordance to our highest self. Absolutely. And I'd just like to take a moment just to allow that to to sink in because it's so true, living in accordance with our higher self our God mm-hmm. is whatever you want to call that, your higher self. Mm-hmm. Um, that is so powerful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you so very much. Yeah, what a wonderful way to start the day. For me, it's a wonderful mm-hmm. way to start the day because it's 5 o'clock in the morning and, you know, living in accordance with our higher self. Definitely mm-hmm. going to leave, continue that today, Dana, that, that motto, that phrase. So thank you for sharing that today. Love to know the like, how would you give or what advice would you give women who feel disconnected with their higher self or also with their bodies and their intuition? What advice would that be? I would say start with, I was gonna say five minutes, that might be a lot. Start with just two minutes every morning and every night before you go to sleep. Just connecting in. And I always say to it, when we get in the mind and we're just, it doesn't, you can move your body, you can sit, you can just tune in every, I'd say definitely do it in the morning. So you can just ask yourself or ask the higher power, like what, who, who am I meant to be today? What is it that I can integrate into my life today that would support me 
in being more of who I truly am. And it's just a practice. It's like building a muscle, right? So it's sometimes like you start off that way. And this is how I was, because I was, I, I can't tell you how long it took me to even just sit in silence or meditation. And I remember a mentor of mine said, put your phone timer on for one minute. It's all you need to do. And I did that. And I actually stayed there for 10 minutes because once I was in it, so it's giving yourself that grace while you're doing it, but just being in it and being in the question so that you can set yourself up with that breath. Cause I think a lot of time what happens is we wake up right away. Our mind is going, we don't know the next thing we have to do, or there's stress in your life or there's, so I would say to just even start there, connect with the body. What does my body need today? Um, and any type of movement is incredible, but definitely not movement that would take someone out of their body or it's strenuous or it's hard, but it's more like a brisk walk on the ocean, really feeling. And it's something it's for everyone. This is going to, this is going to mean something differently, but if you can get into that space and that's what a lot of the, the dance did for me, but for some, it might be just walking by the ocean where you are truly feeling yourself and feeling nature and feeling and and thinking about the thing what is it that that helps me so i know for me when i'm on the beach and i'm all sandy and i'm all sticky and i'm all oceany i actually feel my most feminine best so it's not about having to dress up or it's like where do i feel most connected to that part of me that primal part of me yeah. isn't that amazing is that it doesn't matter what we're wearing, but it's where we are and how we can feel connected to that. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yeah. incredible. Thank you. And I'd love to move on to a little bit about ancestral healing and trauma. Mm -hmm. You have mentioned that, and I know you work with women to help them to go through mm -hmm. ancestral hearing, healing. So what part does healing the trauma from our ancestors from our past and from and the trauma that we that our ancestors have experienced that we've also carried through what part does that play in reclaiming our feminine so there is so much that we carry and take on that we don't even realize from our lineage and so often, and I'll just use experiences with women that I've worked with, it can be through simple somatic work that I help women guide women through so that they can understand where a thought form is coming from or a belief is coming from. And we don't have to, we don't have to go through an experience again. I don't believe that. But even if we have an awareness of that, wait, this thought isn't mine or so what I do want to say about this is there are so many forms of ancestral healing. And one thing that I do love about the work that I do is I never really called it that because I just, I didn't realize that was what was happening through this process. But when we start to heal family dynamics in ourselves, when we start to heal ourselves, we start to heal what we were picking up from our ancestors, from our lineage that was never ours in the first place. So does that make sense? It, it's like when we, yeah, when we start going through the process of ourselves and what we're picking up on, what are the, what are we saying to ourselves? What are the thought forms and beliefs that have been picked up from, from past lineages, from our grandparents, from that we were never ours in the first place. And we can, let those go through. I do a, a couple of different processes, mostly somatic energetic work in letting those go, rewriting the story, shifting the paradigm of we don't have to hold on to that any longer. Cause that just, it's almost like it takes us into victim consciousness, empowering women out of that state. Yes. Yes. Which is again, such a powerful thing to do. And I just want to honor you in for that mm. honor you first of all for you to stepping into that role and you know to helping others to release the past but really empowering themselves and to stepping into their true purpose mm -hmm. of of leadership so thank you ever so much now we were talking a little bit before that you do have some things that you'd like to offer and how can 
people, for everyone who is watching either the live or the replay, do click on the links below this video and connect with Dana. How can people connect with you and how do you help others in their journey and their leadership journey and everything else? Mm. Yeah, I have two main things happening right now is one is a membership. It's fairly new. That is for someone who just wants to come in and get support. And it's called the Luminary Sanctuary. And it's really a place for women to commune together. And I, I say the Luminary Sanctuary, aka Surrender Sanctuary, <laughs> because as women, we need a place to rest in and surrender to. And so, so I do a lot of different topics in there and intuitive guidance and coaching and all that goodness in there. And that is on my website, which I'll share in a minute. But one of my, my, what I am really putting out there right now is I have five spots open for it's one, it's a one-on-one -on -one container along with a mastermind. So that's optional, but they can also mastermind with the other five women that are in this. And it's called the luminary woman and it's a six month container and it's beautiful. It's really, it's very, well, the way I look at it is it's a partnership whenever I do this with one-on-one -on -one with women, it's a partnership. So it's so intuitively and just, I guide, guided by faith and intuition. So I know, of course they come in for a reason, there's themes and, and tools I often give, but also where are you coming in at where you need the, the most support to really step into her, to step into this. And so that most of my offerings or all my offerings are on danacanetto.com. So there's actually a, a button there for Luminary Sanctuary. And then on the offers page, there is a, a kind of button to schedule a call with me around the Luminary Woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. And for, yeah. for everyone who is watching, do take advantage of that. And mm -hmm. Necrotana, especially it's a I see it's a wonderful opportunity to get back in touch with that sacred feminine to yeah. learn how to balance and I'm sure you can help them in this learning how to balance the leadership thing, the business, everything running businesses and being an entrepreneur and families and everything else. Mm -hmm. Learning how to balance that with connecting with the sacred feminine connected yeah. to that sacred part of us yeah yes and stuff so you definitely do you have any advice or anything any tips that people other tips that women can do to get mm -hmm. back in touch with that sacred part and to really live a balanced life yeah one of the things is everything i believe starts with awareness right so I know for me, one of the things that held me ca captive in my masculine was resentments, guilt, anything on those kind of lower consciousness. And that I don't say that with any judgment, we go there, right? Any of these lower consciousness states of judgment and resentment triggers. I would actually, if these women feel called, those of you that are listening feel called to really write those down. What are the resentments you're holding on to? Where do you, where are you feeling guilt or, or anything of that level? You're not forgiving yourself. And to be honest, it might take a long time to write them down because you might think you don't have any and then you write those down and write it down as a way to release and to ask for guidance and how to forgive yourself and those things, because that, those are the energies that put us into the masculine. And when we're able to forgive ourselves, forgive others, I know that's a really touchy thing. That's a big thing I, I touch on too in my work because forgiveness is huge. That's a whole nother episode or, or class or something, but it's giving yourself that grace and compassion to soften and really pay attention to triggers. I know this is big, like this isn't easy, right? But it is a way to start to tune into where those can be healed, transmuted, released so that you can step deeper into grace and compassion and love for self and for others. So I would start there and also of course dance. Hey, if you really want to <laughs> and sacred dance by just putting on some soft music and just feeling your body. And that often conjures up, it moves energy. So it conjures up what might be, maybe do that before writing. And then asking for those things to be healed and let that happen. That's the surrender. Thank you. 
And mm -hmm. I love it how you mentioned grace, doing mm -hmm. things with grace. We, again, as a generalisation in today's world, I think we've forgotten about the experience of allowing grace in, into mm -hmm. our life. Yeah. Ease and grace and just going with that flow, with that feminine yeah. flow. Yeah. And I'd love to know before we finish up, just one other question. Talking about grace and feminine and going with that flow, a lot of people may think or feel that having qualities of grace, having those feminine qualities undermines the leadership roles, the traditional leadership mm. uh, roles and things like that. So how do you respond to that? What would you like to talk about? How having qualities of grace can undermine leadership roles? Yeah, that's a really great question. So the way I look at it, and this is why I speak so I love speaking about the, the the polarities of the two, the feminine and the masculine, because I think what's not understood is that we can be in the feminine in our leadership by tuning in, trusting our intuition, asking where we're being led. What is the next step in the situation? How do I handle this? Now, a part of being the feminine is knowing how to navigate conscious communication, conversations with love, with grace, with compassion. That is the epitome, I think, of leadership. When I think of when I was in my roles in corporate, things that weren't accepted, or there'd be a lot of, I'm going to say, egoic natures at play, where it's power over rather than power under. But if you, we can stay in our leadership with a level of certain boundaries, but still being in that space of understanding, compassion, grace, and the leadership aspect, when we think about what happens to, isn't the masculine more of a leader, the feminine, when she's in her feminine, she uses that information to inform her next step, to inform her action. So like an example, like when I was in corporate, I had a situation where there was somebody very much in their ego and I had to stand in my ground. So I'm not going to be like, oh, feminine soft grace to them, right? But I stopped them and I said, can we have an honest conversation? Mm -hmm. Because I, I can feel the dynamics are at play here and I'm not here to play this game. And I, I mean that with compassion here. And so I can level the ground and they're like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> because I'm not here to play that game. And then speaking from that sovereign space of this is how I see the situation. And so we can so much more powerfully be in our leadership when we come from that place of honesty, conscious communication, not yelling, not telling the person they're being an ego centric, but seeing it's almost like seeing the wound that's playing out in them, holding the space for that and coming in with more power than you probably could if you were in a triggered state. So that's a big piece, I think, is when we can come from our feminine, it's a, we're not respond, we're not reacting to triggers, we're responding from grace in a powerful way. Mm -hmm. Love that again. Not reacting to triggers, but responding. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to share? I would just also share this one thing that I know a lot of the feminine, when you hear the feminine, there's a lot out there, a lot of information, and there's a lot around surrendering. And this is something that I've been in a journey on this last year. And I guess what I would do want to say is, I am so transparent about my journey. And I think that's another really important piece that I want to express in leadership, because I think we think that if we're a leader, we have to have it all put together. We have to have it all together. And then that's when we suffer because we're in the background, like feeling like an imposter, all these things. But if we can just all be open and have that communication flowing, this is where I'm at. I can still help you, but this person might be two steps behind but to really own that. And I think that's a part, a big part of the surrender for a lot of women, especially is that you don't have to hold a front because people are going to respond to you and relate to you more in that role in that way. And also the point of surrender is just surrendering, not just to surrender, let go and surrender, but also surrender whenever is not serving you. 
So uh, surrender has just been a big topic in my world right now. And so I just felt like being called to add that in there. It's a big question mark. I think for a lot of people, what does that mean to surrender? Right. <laughs> and just surrendering to who you are. Yeah, surrendering to that higher purpose, that higher power. Yeah. Um, okay, yes, I agree. Thank you. Yeah. Surrender is part of my life. I've lived yeah. a surrendered life, the majority of my life. It's mm. really just surrendering, surrendering to what is. Yeah. Surrendering to that power, the power of the universe, that guidance, and just yeah. allowing that to happen rather than fighting it rather than challenging and trying to control it. You yeah. certainly do live a much more life with ease and grace. So thank you, Dana, for coming on. Really appreciate it. And for everyone who is watching again, do click on the links below this, this video. And hopefully Dana will come back again sometime soon and have another conversation. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.